Have you ever heard of Hillsong Church? Yes, I do know Hillsong Church. Did you notice my new uh, necklace? Yes, this is my old Hillsong ID card, actually. I'm going to show it to you guys, covering up my name, obviously. This is my old Hillsong uh, London, which is the first Hillsong I ever walked into. Um, ID card, yeah, I was, uh, it says down here TV because I was in the broadcasting and um, yeah, television team, which means I was serving on camera, uh, filming services either for just internal broadcast, internal live broadcast, or sometimes we would also record for, well, if you didn't know, Hillsong has a TV channel. And later on, some of the sermons would be broadcasted out into the t TV channel then. Anyway, guys, yes, I found my old ID cards. I did spring clean the other day and um, I found a couple ID cards. And this one is my ID card from the last conference I served at, yeah, my final Hillsong conference ever before I left the church. Um, that was, uh, yeah, WCC um, Film and TV. Again, I was serving the broadcasting team, same thing. And uh, WCC is the creative conference that they newly started a couple of years ago. I think only like three or four years ago, um, they started doing the creative conference, which is a conference for, well, you guessed it, creatives. <laughs> for anyone working in a, like a creative field, could be literally anything, singing, dancing, um, yeah, filmmaking, photography, anything. But overall, anyone can attend anyway. And this is my volunteer pass from the Hillsong Conference 2019 in Sydney. And one of the accusations against Brian Houston actually happened during that conference. Ended up in the hotel room of a woman that was during that conference, apparently. Yeah, so that is my pass from that. And today, you saw the title, we are going to, we are not going to watch, I already watched it and I'm going to recap and share my thoughts. Hillsong is an evangelical musical big church. I've heard of it, I think mainly through Justin Bieber. It was the first church that I actually went to in New York City. I went every single Sunday. I mean, the first thing I wanted to share is obviously, if you watched my testimony, then you already know this. But uh, yeah, if you don't know, I ended up in Hillsong Church as well because of Justin Bieber actually and Carl Lentz. So I watched, yeah, secular television channel, you know, just uh, overall news reporting. And the news at that time were that Justin Bieber and this super like attractive, um, pumped up pastor, um, they are going out for a drink together. And they were shown taking shots at a bar. Yeah, from paparazzi. They were paparazzi, um, yeah, taking shots at a bar. And that was that news article. I watched it and it got me, yeah, interested. I was like, wait a second, what did they say? That's a pastor? Um, so I looked it up. I looked up who's Carl Lenz, what is going on here. I was a non-Christian at that time, guys. I was a non-Christian all my life. I was not raised in a Christian family. And um, yeah, I had never been to church. Um, what got me interested is that I didn't know that, yeah, Christians could look that way, could just be like normal people um, and just, yeah, look cool. And that caught my attention. And then I looked up Hillsong, I researched about Carl Lenz, I watched a couple sermons of his. So he's like the first pastor I got in touch with. I have a whole video on this channel about that, but that's a real quick rundown. That's how I ended up for the first time in church, like the other girl said. Hillsong was the first church I ever walked into at that time. And um, it was because of Justin and Carl, yeah, and that news report. <laughs> Um, but glory to God, he can use anyone and anything. And I want to, yeah, disclaimer here, obviously this, um, exposed documentary, I mean, it's called exposed. Um, don't expect them to say anything good about his song. Yeah. I mean, exposed means, okay, they're trying to be shocking and well, usually it's quite negative. 
So that's what I expected and that's what you get. So I want to put out there, obviously I'm, I'm a person who, yeah, is very grateful and thankful actually for his song and um, for everything that just happened in the last couple of years. I'm not going to share my whole testimony again here. If you're interested more in my story, please let me know. Yeah, obviously subscribe to my channel and I'm willing to answer any of your questions. But there are people out there like me where God used a church like Hillsong yeah, to speak to. And I'm one living testimony here, so let's not forget that. Regardless of that, I left the church for a reason too. And yeah, keep on watching now um, because yeah, there are some things that I experienced too that are not so positive. The first thing you see is a welcome team. They're usually the nicest people. You know, Richard, you're amazing. We're so happy to have you here. We can see great things for your future. You, you know, we really love you. They really make you feel welcome, make you feel wanted, and make you feel good. I was in the welcoming team. Yes, um, I served in many teams. I showed you my passes for the yeah, television team, but I served in many different teams too, guys. I actually, yeah, one of them was the welcoming team. Welcoming team, he said it a little bit negative. I don't know, it came across a little bit sarcastic. I understand his mm, skepticism, but honestly, when I served in the welcoming team, it was very authentic. There was nothing fake about it. Um, before the shift starts, you do have a team meeting. I mean, it's in every volunteer group, you have a team meeting together and usually it ends with prayer and then you go out and surf for the day. And of course, that was the same with the welcoming team. So beforehand, before we sh which start our, I say shift, it sounds very work-ish, <laughs> but obviously it was volunteering. Um, but yeah, before we start our shift, start our round um, for the day, we would meet as a group and we would, yeah, our team leader would, you know, fire us up. Okay, guys, let's do this, like a motivational speech, which I think is great. I mean, it's team building, you know, and of course we had then like these, not guidelines, but the team leader would fire us up by saying, yeah, like you are the first um, face that people see when they walk through the door. So let's make sure um, they feel welcomed and you have a smile on your face. They did tell us that, of course, but it was nothing like, oh, I got to do this now and I got to like, you know, put my fake smile on. It was nothing like that. Like we were all there and we were serving in that specific team anyway. We signed up for that volunteer team to welcome people. Long story short, it was a genuine, you know, it was genuine from us. Like we did it for passion and for helping others. But I do, I get this like a little bit skepticism that there might be like some fakeness going on. Maybe to a certain extent, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Let me know what you guys think of that. Can you describe a service for me? Walk me through what it would be like, you know, when you first show up outside of Hillsong. Because um, Hillsong London was in the Dominion Theatre, in a big theatre, many people walked in and they actually thought church would be yeah, a theatre show. So the overall feel um, of the church was, yeah, more like a theatre performance, like a concert. Um, people would mistake it for that. Uh, people that would walk in by accident. Um, because, yeah, I think it's similar in Hillsong, New York, where it was like, like a, in a club thing or also theater. Um, I think the London venue is similar to that because it's also a theater and people just think there's a theater show going on. And then you, then you walk in and the first thing you hear and see is then the worship, like a band on stage and the flashing lights. So yes, you, you do think, oh, there's a concert going on. That's the feeling of it. <laughs> yeah, that's what you... Um, and obviously from the outside, I mean, it's a theater, yeah. This was going to be a place where I could call my home. I need a minute. <laughs> that, that It hurts to look back because I was so into it. I was so embedded in it. I, I wanted to believe it. When I left, uh, I 
genuinely believed I was the problem. Um, sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. I get that emotional part a lot and I still have that, to be honest. Um, it's hard for me to yeah, watch performances still or yeah, anything related to Hillsong. Especially that shows like the worship part or the people. Um, because you, ha you still have that emotional connection. That's why it's so hard to leave a church as big as that. I think maybe, I don't know if it's the size. But it's so hard because you're so emotionally attached to it. And yeah, Hillsong is really big on the social part. Worship and social. Social um, yeah, gatherings and, and so on. Everyone's wearing what they want. There was diversity on stage and among the people in the pews. Hillsong is a safe space for them. I could be whoever I wanted. People didn't care. Again, just that social aspect of his song is so big, which yeah also makes you emotionally very attached to the people, to your community. And when you leave the church, you have none of that. Like all your um, yeah social life disappears pretty much. But I started looking into it and suddenly all of these songs that I had heard my whole life, I realized were written by Hillsong in the first place. Their songs are better than everyone else's and they can kind of infiltrate into other churches by having good music. I mean, many people just know Hillsong because of the music. Many times uh, people would walk into church and for the first time and they said, oh, I came here because I realized Hillsong is a church and not just um, Christian music. It was very interesting for me actually in the first episode how they explained how that yeah heavy heavy relying on music um, affected the whole well growing of the church um, I guess yeah Hillsong is kind of like evolved around the music and then just built itself up on that as a church back to yeah the emotional uh, part and attachment like music they made the christian music the worship so such a big part it's more emotional and like a personal thing nowadays rather than yeah focusing on god and well originally worship should be you know worshiping god focusing on god um but what churches like Hillsong, it's not just Hillsong, but Hillsong, I guess, when it comes to music, is like the pioneer, the biggest one. These kind of swells of emotion and huge, momentous chord progressions. So it's made to make you feel something. They want you to feel the presence of God within you. Um, yeah, when it comes to churches like that, they take worship and make it more as like an entertainment thing or yeah, like a personal healing thing. Like it's an emotional thing. Um, I mean, I've seen people breaking down, crying and just bursting out. And I myself, I had multiple worship sessions at Hillsong where I myself broke down in tears and just, and I liked what one of the girls said. It's hard to distinguish. She explained it perfectly. But it's easy to mistake emotional manipulation for a movement of God, right? Are you crying because the Lord is staging some kind of intervention in your life? Or are you crying because the chord structure is built to make you cry? It's hard to distinguish, okay, how much is actually then, well, God and Holy Spirit touching you, um, speaking to you? Or how much of it is your person, yeah, like your personal emotions. Um, like, where's the line? Like, how do you distinguish that? Then I think that really got me thinking. I really liked that um, that she said that because I myself, it's hard. I I can't give you that answer, guys. I I can't see. Like, if I think back at those times, now my worship obviously looks different, especially when you are. Especially when you are in these big conferences with like thousands of people. 
that is very emotional too like everyone around you is singing and these really great songs they are great songs they're very catchy they're very catchy songs and then there's this like concert going on with the band and the lightning it's all very professionally set up and it all influences your emotions yeah so how how much of it is then yeah worship to god and your emotional experience very difficult to answer any week there are songs that even if you went every week you would have never heard because they're new they're being tested live on the audience every sunday which is kind of funny right you say like you're going to worship you're going to like experience your faith your once a week practice and unbeknownst to you the people on stage who are leading you in this like emotional worship are testing their new products on you Brian Houston had his sights on expanding globally. By the end of the 2000s, they really wanted to get into the US market. Brian Houston released this mission statement and it was titled, The Church That I See. He talked about wanting a church that filled stadiums and influenced cities and was spread around the globe. It's a church growing so quickly that buildings struggle to contain the increase. Now, there's this thing where they painted quite negatively, and that is, yeah, wanting to grow a church, like in general. Um, let's not just look at his song. Just any pastor who, yeah, wants to grow his church. I want to ask you guys, do you think that's really such a negative thing? It's hard, obviously, to look at the heart of a, pe a person. And what is the real like intention here? Is it really to spread the gospel and bring more people to Jesus? And yeah, grow a global community that is, yeah, worshiping God. And I mean, that's a good thing, right? That's a great thing. That's a good thing. That's a great goal to have. Or we can't see the heart of a person. Like, is that really the driving force here? Or is it yeah wanting to get your name out there and like grow your business like as a church which is hillsong accused of all the time like being a, a business more than a church because the church has a vision to grow and grow bigger um let me know guys yeah how negative do you think of that is that really like such a bad thing to do carl does have this x factor i have gum because I break rules. I'm not supposed to have gum, but I do it anyway. He's in shape. He's attractive. Carl is a very, very charismatic person on stage. I mean, did y'all watch the royal wedding? But I found out about Carl and knew that I wanted to attend his church when I came to go to NYU. As I said, I walked into that church because of Carl Lentz too. Um, guys, God can use anyone, anyone. Um, it's tragic what happened to Carl, and yes, he was very charismatic. First of all, he's not the only one. All these like big charismatic churches have at the moment is like a char having a charismatic leader. Carl was one of them. Yes, he was very charismatic, good looking. I mean, it's 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 the perfect formula for yeah success <laughs> to be popular. And he was very sociable. He had very good social skills. The way he looks at you, I was like, oh, okay, like I'd follow this guy anywhere. Like he just, just seems so, so genuine. There are just some people who just have that thing where they can just connect with people really well. And he's got that. Let's not forget everyone is human and we all have, you know, through and through sinful hearts. We are birthed into sin. We all struggle with that on a daily basis. One of it is definitely the celebrity worship. It's hard in the secular world to survive and, and live in the secular world without getting affected by it. Um, I believe everyone struggled at some point in their life with celebrity worship and we look up to people and think they are better than us or they have more followers or more money or whatever. Let's face it, they're not coming there for sound doctrine. They're not coming there to be fed the word. They're coming there to see the cool Carl Lentz. Personally, yeah, it was cool when other pastors came, but when it was Carl, I was like, I'm glad I came to the 7 p.m. And some New Yorkers can't seem to get enough of their unlikely pastor. Carl Lentz, I mean, he's drawing people in to Hillsong, New York. You should see that one. 
And yeah, there are many pastors nowadays that became these like celebrity pastors, which Carl was one of them, and people looked up to him. And then when, you know, everything went down with him, um, people were shocked, like, what? <laughs> He's actually a normal person that is struggling with sin. Um, that is just, no one should be shocked by that, you guys. Just remember, do not worship any person on this planet. No person is worth to be worshipped because everyone is the same. We are all the same. We all struggle on a daily basis with sin. And if we hear someone is struggling with sin, um, all we should do is pray for them. Carl is a normal person. The fame got into his head, which is very hard actually. As someone who works in the entertainment industry and yeah, work with, I guess, famous people like so-called celebrities. Um, I met many in my life, I work with them together and it is hard, like you have to think their life is every single day, people come up to them, people scream their name, people admire them and every single day you are walking on this laid out path for you, yeah, where people kind of like, you know, throw the flowers on the floor before you walk and it's like, it's hard to not get affected by that because of our sinful heart. Like we naturally then fall into this belief like, oh, I'm better than everyone. Like, look, everyone is like, their eyes light up when they see me and they yeah, worship me. So I must be something special. I think people can get into preaching for the right reasons and with the best of intentions, but getting the fame and getting the attention as a species, like we are not good with power. Like power, power corrupts. Um, it's hard to not let that get into your head. Um, and it takes a lot of, yeah, prayer, close relationship with God to fight these negative things, this, this sinful desires, this sin off. And, um, and when we make uh, pastors into celebrities, it can happen that it gets into their head. And it seems like with Carl that happened. But should we be surprised by that? No, he's a normal person. He's been struggling with this. And we all have to pray for him to get through this and be able to come back to God and realize that he's a person like everyone else, <laughs> like all of us. And we are all the same. We are all loved by God the same. We all have our talents in different ways. We all have our unique calling on our life, unique purpose, and that makes us all equally special. He mainstreamed the church even more. It, it wasn't just this Australian startup that's popular for its music anymore. It was Justin Bieber's church. They got write-ups in GQ magazines, in music magazines, in, in all sorts of popular press. But in Hillsong, yes, there is this celebrity culture going on, but no one should be surprised by that because Hillsong and other mega churches, but Hillsong relies heavily on that, yeah, worship and band and music and lights and it's very secular influenced. So of course, it's easier than to for secular practices like celebrity worship to enter this kind of church. A few years ago, I started an Instagram account showing megachurch pastors wearing expensive sneakers. I was showing my friend a photo of Carl when I first started reporting on Hillsong, and she thought he was from the Jersey Shore. I mean, this is clearly a man who cares a lot about his body and his presentation and his appearance. He dresses well. He was always about the tattoos, the, the trendy stubble, jeans, leather jackets, that sort of thing. This is the way you dress normally and... No, I normally have a collar. You and do? And a robe. No, uh -huh. I'm kidding. This <laughs> is... Okay, here's one more question for you guys. Um, what do you think with the whole, yeah, should we call out, call out? Should we even comment on things that, yeah, other Christians wear, pastors wear? Let me know if that's okay to comment on something. I personally, in general, I couldn't care less what someone wears. And what I didn't like in this first episode in this documentary, um, that they kind of made it seem, yeah, they talked negatively about the fashion style, like the fashion sense of someone else, which I think is wrong. 
I would not want to, yeah, be criticized for, oh, like you're wearing a leather jacket or like your pants are too tight. And I couldn't care less, honestly. I could not care less what others wear. Let everyone like wear their fashion. Um, where I might find a critique then is, yeah, is it appropriate? Yeah. Um, but then appropriate for everyone looks different. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But then, yeah, there's a thin line between, yeah, just blatantly critiquing someone's fashion sense. Like, oh, that shirt is ugly or, oh, that, that shirt has a weird uh, coloration or like, why is he wearing a leather jacket? That should not matter at all. And I always like that about Hillsong actually, that everyone could, could just come as they are. Again, like in an appropriate way. Let me know what you think of that and what do you think, how... I think it's a whole discussion, especially when it comes to, you know, Christian women are constantly criticized. Um, yeah, I have a story to tell about that too. Do I want to tell that? Uh, I tell it, but very shortly, because I'm actually curious what you guys think of that. So one issue I had back then, well, issue, it really made me think. It was in Hillsong, um, in a smaller campus in Sydney, in the city campus. And, you know, Sydney, Australia is a hot, hot continent. <laughs> it was summertime, it was really hot. And obviously everyone, you know, usually comes in like dresses and like tank tops. And in general, I think it's totally fine. A hot summer day. Why can you not wear a tank top and shorts? It's hot, yeah? You're not doing it to be, like, to look, you know, a certain way or try to attract people with your look. However, like, one thing <laughs> happened. I was, yeah, in church and we were in the middle of worship and I opened my eyes and then that second, like, a girl wanted to cross our line and, like, there was a free seat, so we had to give her space so she could get through the see-through row and I, I looked and well she had a see-through shirt on with no bra so her two friends were out and you could see everything and I kept like you know it's I mean your eyes go there your eyes go there and everyone who wears something like that knows that but I looked over and yeah, she was like worshipping then too and having her hands up and like jumping and then Hey, I don't know how to feel about it. Let me know what you guys think. How would you react when something like that happens? Because I guess that is where I draw the line then. I mean, do you think it's appropriate to go to church with not even wearing a bra, but then also a see-through shirt so you can kind of like see everything? Let me know how you would have reacted, but I remember that moment because I was so shocked. But then at the same time, I want to be compassionate and think, okay, maybe, you know, she was a non-believer or a new believer. However, she was jumping in. But again, in Hillsong, you never really know. Is that person a Christian is worshiping God or are they just here for the fun and the party? And so it's a bit difficult. So I want to be like compassionate and think if someone is not saved and they live a secular life, then that person wouldn't think it's inappropriate. Um, so in hindsight, I want to think that um, because I want to be compassionate and I don't want to be so judgmental. But I guess that's one of the things with being a Christian. Like you, you. Sometimes I find it hard to distinguish. Okay, am I being judgmental here, and do I need more compassion? Um, or is it for me? Is it appropriate for me to? Yeah, call that person out and say, hey, this is not okay. Carl is definitely a narcissist. I think you have to be a narcissist to succeed with any megachurch. The Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. He is so full of himself with arrogance and that's a big problem, you know, because he's the founder of this very dangerous charismatic movement that young people are really attracted to. The worse culture gets, the better it is for us. The last part of episode one was pretty much just about Carl then. And I'm not going to get into... This video is already long enough. 
so I'm gonna save that for the next video so please guys if you're not subscribed yet uh, please do so and if you have any questions so far uh, that you want me to answer in the next upcoming videos please drop them down below or my email address is always down below as well um, and I'm thinking about bringing some guests on so in case you're watching and you have experience with hills on yourself um, you were a member like me I would actually love to invite some of my fellow um, brothers and sisters onto my channel in the future and yeah if you're in another country and you're far away from me which probably most of you are um, then we could do like you know a FaceTime chat or online and then screen record it I want to communicate more with you guys and create interesting content and I would love to actually yeah, invite some guests uh, onto my little podcast here now so please reach out to me and see you then in my next video which will feature call more prominently and and i'm gonna spoil here a little bit i did not like that part um, or how they edited and how they talked about carl at all um that's where um mm, yeah i found this whole series way too negative and yeah but thank you guys for today and see you next time bye bye